What is up, Doug here, and welcome to this live stream. I see we have a handful of people on. Sorry to keep you waiting. I was chatting with my buddy, Alex, over at WP Eagle. So he's doing a live stream later today, so you should check that out. Today, I'm going to talk about how long it takes to earn your first $100 with the Amazon affiliate uh, program, the associate program. And I'm going to go through a few things. Actually, I created a pretty solid outline here. It's in the description. There's a lot of fun on our kind moderator. We'll probably have another one. Um, and thanks for help, helping out there, Lance. Really appreciate it. Aiden, what's up? And then we have, let's see, just trying to say hello to everyone. Sounds like uh, people are joining in now, Aiden. Hi, hi. Yeah, lots of chatter. Good, good, good. And we allowed it and just kind of explain it a little bit more. How fast, and, and literally, it's like every time I do a live stream, someone asks, hey, I started a site, I put up you know, 10 posts, when am I going to start making money? So we have to pump the brakes and really look at the full timeline, which is probably a lot longer than you think, because you maybe you see headlines of you know, someone made X amount in a month. Maybe, the, maybe they're like, hey, I made $5,000 in a month, and it's super easy, it's four steps. Now, I'm guilty of publishing um, headlines like that, but usually I do mention the amount of work and the amount of time that it takes. So I really want to emphasize that. And I think uh, one of the first lines here in the, in the description is more work equals faster results. So make no mistake, this takes time. It's hard work. You're actually going to make some mistakes along the way. And that's okay. As long as you could adjust, as long as they're not like critical, terrible mistakes, you should be all right. And I see some uh, mention of video lagging. Uh, does, do other people have issues with the video or is it just an isolated case here? So I'm going to walk you through the timeline and tell you about how long it takes to earn your first hundred bucks. So first, I'm just going to answer the question, all right? So how long does it take you to make your first $100? And I'm not talking about the $100 month yet, but I will get to that. Um, but the first $100. So it depends on how much work you do, but you could make $100 within about two months or so, all right? A lot of things have to go right, and you probably have to be putting in a lot of work, all right? So you probably have to be putting in a few hours a day to, to make a hundred bucks within two months, but it can be, uh, can be done. Now, a couple of things I'm going to highlight. And again, this is in the outline. So I'll talk about how to beat the Google sandbox or the so-called waiting period. Um, what happens after you make your first hundred dollars cumulatively, and then how long to reach a hundred dollars per month. And I will actually give examples of the time, um, it takes to make your first sale on Amazon. Um, and I have examples of each one of these. There are actually links to the interviews in the description. So don't watch them yet. But if you if you want like the proof of each one of these, I interviewed every single one of these folks. So making $1,400 per month in a bad niche. So that's interesting, right? Pretty high amount of money. And then people are saying there is video stutter and... I'm not sure if there's much I can do here with that um, because I'm on, actually, let me, let me check one thing here. Let me, let me see what I could do. Thanks for letting me know everyone. All right. I'm going to talk about time to reach a hundred dollars. Even if you're working full time and have a family, not quite reaching a hundred dollars yet, but you only have 13 posts and you're doing this on the side, making $500 within a year. Uh, multi hundred dollars in a seasonal niche. Some people, you know, accidentally have a seasonal niche and then there's ups and downs, but you still can make multiple hundred dollars per month and then reaching 3K per month in eight months and 4K within 14 months. All right. And it sounds like maybe it is um, isolated as far as the video. So hopefully it's not too bad. I appreciate the patience. Now, before I go on, my course, Five Figure Niche Site, is open for enrollment, but only for another couple of days. So enrollment closes on Friday at the end of day. There is an outline for the class schedule. If you are interested in that, it goes week by week, 12-week course um, for the, the full 
course and the basic course um, is just nine weeks. Um, additionally, there are links to every one of the interviews and examples that I mentioned. So do have a look after we finish the live stream. All right. So the thing is, if you if you go in and you do just a little bit of work, you're just going to get a little bit of results. And that is sort of uh, the example of making, you know, not quite a hundred dollars on the side, but you publish 13 posts and maybe within, um, you know, a year, you could be pulling in seven months. And that, that's the, the example um, with Joe, right? So she's a student of five figure niche site and she put, you know, she did some work, she followed the course and she sees that, you know, she can actually make money online, which is a big deal because once you are, you know, pulling in some money, you understand that you can do more work and earn more. So as far as the time for the first sale, that is actually an interview with Wesley. Now, he launched a site in uh, the very end of January of this year, 2018, and he made his first sale within 32 days. So that, that's pretty fast. So that's just his first sale. And I haven't checked it with him recently, but I feel like, um, okay, so we are hearing that the video is not that great. Let me just make sure there's not stuff running in the background here. Always fun going live. Okay. Next, yeah, let me just make sure there's nothing else going on here. Thanks everyone for your patience. And by the way, while we're just hanging, um, has everyone checked out the recent interviews that I put out yesterday? Um, five figure niche site students who are doing well. If you haven't checked them out, there's probably a couple hours worth of content on that, but really inspiring. I actually had a few people email me just saying like, thanks for publishing those. Really cool to see, you know, real people doing, uh, you know, real work. Okay. So 32 days to the first sale. So that's possible. And part of this, like, uh, beating the Google sandbox is publishing very low, uh, or publishing content that's targeting very low competition keywords. And you should do that if you're just starting out, right? If you are going for a higher competition keyword, you it's going to take longer. And if you're just beginning, if your site's brand new, you're not going to get much traffic and it'll seem like things aren't working. And it feels bad when you feel like things aren't working. All right. Um, I know from experience when you're doing this stuff and, it, and you're expecting something to happen and it does not happen, then you think you're doing something wrong. Maybe you skip around to a bunch of other, uh, you know, opportunities out there and you end up, you know, failing at everything, unfortunately, right? Because you have to stick with something long enough for it to work. Now, the thing is, if you use the keyword golden ratio, most likely you're going to be able to get some traffic, even if it's just a little bit, and you're going to rank some posts. Even if it's like in the top 20, that's way better than um, a lot of other people who are ranking like in the you know top 100 or over 100, right? So if you can get a little bit of traffic and make a couple sales, you'll, you know, get that small win and you'll be motivated to continue on. So keyword golden ratio is a great way to sort of skip the Google sandbox. And um, there's plenty of examples of that, right? And a couple of them are in the description. So do check those out. So after the first hundred bucks, right? So I would say you could probably publish um, 10 to 20 articles within the first month or so. And then after that, you do promotion and um, you know get the word out about your site. It wouldn't be crazy for you to cumulatively make over you know two to three months, a hundred dollars. And at that point, you're thinking, hey, this is working. I'm getting some traction. And luckily, as you get more traction, um, you just sort of uh, you grow even faster, which is good. And that is <clears throat> like you could see that in some of the other links that I placed in there. So and everyone's saying the the videos are doing well. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So next, how long does it take to reach hundred per month? Now, again, all these examples that I'm giving are merely examples. You could even think of them as exception cases. Nothing's guaranteed. All right. So you could do all this stuff and it may just not work out. All right. Sometimes that happens. Some people, usually there's a mistake that you've made and you don't know that you've made the mistake. And then someone looks at your site 
and then they could tell you, hey, you're keyword stuffing or there's too much affiliate content or something like that. And then you make the changes and then you get traffic. You start ranking, you get traffic, you make sales, things are good. Now, the first $100 a month, I usually see that around six, the six month mark, give or take one month or two, right? So we have had some people who, you know, within four months, they're making $2,500 a month and they're growing. I've seen other people take, um, you know, one year to hit $500 per month. And that's okay. Everyone's, you know, on their own trajectory. Everyone learns and executes at a different speed. So for example, if you could only put in one hour per day, five to seven days a week, it's probably going to take you about six months to make your first hundred dollar month. All right. So depending on how much work you put in, you may be able to do this faster or slower. After you make your first hundred dollar month, I usually see growth um, like a lot more, not exponential, but it, you can more than double quickly, right? So when you look at some of the examples of reaching $4,000 in 14 months or 3,000 in eight months, a lot of times, um, a lot of work was done in the first six months and the growth was pretty slow. Once you get out of the sandbox, the six month period, roughly, um, a lot of times growth can go from, you know, 400 to 1, 1,800 to 3,500, right? You see growth really quick and just depends on, you know, tons of factors, right? How much content you have, if you're doing link building, the quality of the content, the competition, the quality of the competition's content. So there's a lot, there's too many factors to, to give a great answer on that. But in general, <clears throat> your first $100 a month is going to be probably around six months or so. And then after that, growth is dependent on the amount of effort that you put into it, like most things in life. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick recap and then I'm going to hop over. I see some questions where I asked. I'll do my best to answer the questions. And it sounds like people did check out a lot of the videos that I published yesterday. Again, very good, um, good examples of, you know, putting in the work and then getting results, not fast results, right? If you're looking for um, fast results or stuff that's easy, probably not the right channel for you, all right? Everything's a little harder than you think. And I, I try and motivate you, but I mean, if your expectations are that you're gonna have to work hard to get good results, that's what I want, all right? Like your expectations should be lined up with, you know, this takes time. If you are, if you're trying to get everything to happen fast, um, you may want to look for advice somewhere else, right? I'll just be honest with you because this is not a quick fix. This is, um, it's a marathon, not a sprint, all that stuff. All right, cool. Any questions about the timeline? Feel free to ask and thanks everyone for your patience, um, with the bad video. I'm not sure what it was. Um, to be honest with you, I closed a couple tabs in Chrome, <laughs> but that's about it. All right. And I'm looking through for, to find some questions here. Um, da, 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 da. Sorry. The chat, there's just a lot of stuff in the chat. Cleaning thing says, should I publish 30 posts and let it sit or should I publish as many posts as possible nonstop? Well, Cleaning things, that's all up to you, my friend. Um, I have no idea like the model in which you're doing. I would probably publish, I wouldn't, if those are my only two choices, I would do neither, all right? That's just me. So I will make some assumptions and give you an answer to a question that you didn't ask. That's just my style. You should publish 10 posts and then start promoting it. All right. You should do sprints of work. Don't publish 30 things and just cross your fingers and hope it worked. Right. You got to do something about it. No one cares about your site. No one is going to try and find your site on their own. Google may kind of try and find it, but you know, you got to do something. So you shouldn't let it sit. If you want to do 30 posts instead of 10, that's totally cool. I would recommend doing 10, not 30. Um, but anyway, you, I would recommend you um, 
like go and try and promote your site and try and get traffic. So just again, I didn't answer the question that you asked, but I tried to answer a question that was like the next one that you should have asked. Um, Brian says, does registering with Google lessen the sandbox? No, it does not. And Arthur's on, what's up? Um, Alwyn says, you had a site that sat for six months with only eight posts. You made a few sales and you went back and you wrote 35 posts and they shoot to page one immediately. Cool, Alwyn, very cool. And Lance says, Yours are ranking fast too out of the sandbox. Lance is really cool because I know we we struggled. And as I mentioned before, I know that um, you know, you could make one little mistake. And if you tweak that mistake, you could be good to go. Ten hot deal says, Can I get traffic with KGR without backlinks? Yes, you can, but if you put backlinks, if you actually promote your site, it'll be better. And what we got here? Um, okay, Imran says, you don't have much experience writing articles, 2000 word blog posts, take you three days. I don't have a budget to hire a writer. Later, you will, do I have any tips? Um, yeah, take the three days to write, you know, the one article and then do them one at a time. And then in, you know, two weeks, you'll have four articles in a month. You'll have eight. All right. So everything is slow. Uh, if you don't have the budget, you, do, you can do it yourself. Uh, you don't have to hire someone. You can write it all yourself. And I write slow too, 2000 words taking three days. That seems fine to me. So basically you just need to buckle down and do some work. All right. Excellent. And people are watching those videos. So really nice playlist um, with the five figure niche site success stories. Really appreciate um, those folks spending time with me and actually um, I recently heard from one of my students from October 2016, and she just crossed the $2,000 per month mark, which is a big deal for her. So I'm going to try and get her on um, a live stream and potentially some content within Five Figure Niche Sites. So Tech Dots says, is Keyword Revealer better than some Russian age refs? Uh, you know what? It depends on what you're trying to do. I'm going to say generally no. But I haven't, to be fair, I haven't used Keyword Revealer um, much recently. But in general, if I was looking for like information on backlinks and such, I would probably go to Ahrefs. If I was looking for keyword research type information, I would probably go to SEMrush. And if I was just doing like pure keyword research, um, I would probably use either one of the tools. Both are pretty good. All right, cleaning things. What would be the best way to promote a health niche site? I would, luckily, these are interesting. Cleaning things, you're, you're new to the channel, right? Um, but basically, uh, what I'm gonna say here, Cleaning things, you could do blog commenting and then guest posting would be a good starting point. And then I would try to network within the health, um, fitness area, and then probably you know be able to spread the word. Michael, what's up? Good to have you on. Good to see you. Mark says what you find with KGR posts, you don't need to promote. Now the thing is now. Mark, have you published KGR posts and tried to promote? And then how did it go? Because the thing is, like, if you do, if you do more, um, the results usually reflect it. Can you publish KGR content and not build links? Yes. But if you do, I contend that it's better. 
I contend that it's better. And cleaning things, by the way, if you uh, search on my channel, if you just go to the main channel page, there's a little search bar thing, right? If you just search on my channel and ask almost any of the questions that you just asked, um, there'll be like a live uh, or a recorded webinar, which was um, recorded live. But you know, usually you'll be able to find that sort of information. And I recently published an FAQ on my blog, which is here. And I encourage you just to read through that because a lot of questions that you may have um, or stuff that you're thinking about, like I've already, I've written it out in a more thoughtful way. When I'm just talking, I usually stumble over my words, a lot of filler words, stuff like that. I'm watching the chat. Uh, I'm all over the place, you know, so and everyone's so patient. But yeah, the FAQ section, really good. Spent a lot of time on that. There's more work to be done there, but um, a lot of those were sort of like spawned from a Q&A type session like this, where I know what people are asking and I just wrote it down. So, by the way, how many people, I see we have like 35-ish on the chat or yeah, yeah, live on the chat. How many people read the blog Niche Site Project as well? Or do you just watch the live streams? Just curious of the overlap here. Don't forget the course, Five Figure Niche Site is open this week. Enrollment um, doesn't open that often. So if you are interested in getting like the blueprint of you know what uh, Ben and Adrian and Marty and who else did I talk to? Um, Graham, of course. The blueprint that they followed is Five Figure Niche Site. So there's a lot of content on my channel, on my blog, plus everyone else all over the internet. It's really hard to sort through all the information. And if you skip around from you know my plan to another plan to someone else's thing, you're probably going to struggle a little bit. If you're first getting started, I think like combining ideas from different sources is great. But if you're if everything is new, combine you may combine the wrong things and not sh you're not sure what the issue is. So my suggestion and most other people with courses or that are teachers, they will recommend like follow like a person to see see out a process to understand what to do. And then after that, you can um, adjust and you have to learn the rules before you break them, that sort of thing. So if you learn one process, then you can start mixing and matching. In fact, I have quite a few students who have taken a course elsewhere and, you know, they've learned a lot, but they, st they realize that they have gaps in, say, the project management area. And that's where I could help out a lot. Okay, cool. And we we see that several people read both, which is awesome. Thank you for that. Um, Brian says, you mainly chat, but you've read some from the blog. And Arthur is often at the blog, both live and people read the blog from work. Cool. And that that reminds me, like when I was first getting started, I found um, Smart Passive Income, the podcast, and then listened to a few episodes and then, you know, went over to the blog and when I was at work or something like that, then I was a, I, I read a lot of the blog stuff versus listening to podcasts. Um, and then when I was sitting in traffic commuting, well, it's a great time to listen to podcasts. So cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks everyone for the support. All right. Um, Imran says, you recently commented on a video about the traffic that is showing on keywords everywhere. If the keywords everywhere shows zero monthly searches, should I target that? I thought I answered that, um, in the comments. Sorry if I didn't, it's hard to manage all the comments to be honest with you. So if, um, if it shows zero, should you target it? If you want to, you can, um, if it's something that is an auto suggest from Google, then I would say, yes, go for it. If you know it's going to be a useful piece of content, maybe you know the niche and you know that people are interested in that topic, then yes, publish it. If it just shows zero and you are unsure, that's probably one that I would skip. But if it's an auto suggest or something that you see on answer the public or yeah, answer the public or Quora or like, you know, it's a good piece of content, publish it. All right. Um, 
push call says is my course as it was in 2016 or what you update I update everything all right so as things change i update it and I actually have been updating and upgrading the competition analysis because the tools change sometimes and you know sometimes i learn something new you know maybe even from a live stream i learned from you too this is part of the reason why i do this um i learn from everyone i'm trying to learn constantly i have different sources i have mastermind groups where i could chat with people and see what you know the word on the street is i could test things and then i put it into the course so i would say there's only like half of the course that is still like it was in 2016 and then the other half has been updated some of it is as new as like last week when i reshot like a whole unit because things change and um yeah so it's completely up to date and i have keep it up to date and i think the testimonials uh that you can see in the proof that it works are in the videos that i published yesterday so push cal i recommend you check them out and then push cal if you're interested in the theme that i like um let me send you a link because I think that's the best way for me to uh, tell you about it. So it's, the, it's in the FAQ section even. So yeah, push call, I recommend you take a look at the FAQ section. There's a lot of questions that people ask all the time. And my overall answer is your theme doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Um, however, I know people do like to hear about themes and such. So have a look at that link and I think it'll be helpful for you. Any other questions out there? Imran says uh, to follow up on his question, um, it's an auto suggest term that says uh, zero monthly searches. I say go for it. Cool. Any other questions? Okay. There's a section, one thing I'm mean, gonna see, Auto 24 seven says, what do you think about rank brain? Can you ask a more specific question? And actually, if people want to um, indulge me, I mean, this whole channel is just me indulging uh, where I just talk about myself and other things. I try and answer questions and be helpful. Okay, Michael says, in addition, and I'll come back to the thing I was talking about. Michael says, in addition, but Michael's in the course, right? You're the you're the Michael and five figure niche site, right? So you get priority, my friend. All right, Michael says, in addition to guest posts, what are my thoughts on article submission sites? Have they ever been effective? All right. Article submission sites, are you talking about? Um, can you give me an example of one of those, Michael? And basically, I would say I avoid those. All right. If it's something where anyone could submit their article to it and have it published, then you know the cost is low and the effectiveness is low because at some point it's been abused. Now, has it ever been effective? Yes, you used to be able to do this. And when I got started watching Pat Flynn and uh, Spencer Hawes and a few other folks, basically you could use those um, article submission sites, other places where you just submit an article and even if it's like a little bit curated, like those all were like recommended. And, you know, I remember learning about article spinners and like submission sites, like article submission sites from Pat Flynn, which seems crazy now. Here we are like, you know, eight years after he wrote those articles. But, um, you know, in general, those are not effective anymore because they are you know, they're abused. They've been abused. So I would say I avoid it now, Michael, instead of guest posts or in addition to guest posts, what I may recommend is, you know, some of the stuff that Dave Fox talked about recently, where you're doing outreach to nonprofits or organizations where it's a less crowded channel, right? A nonprofit um, is usually a little understaffed, a little underfunded, and they want people to listen to them and talk about them so that there's more uh, awareness of their nonprofit and brand and all that stuff. So if you like go to a, le a less crowded channel than say guest posting, then that'll be a great 
thing um, to do because there's just there's less competition. So you could go in and make friends and, and potentially do that sort of outreach. And you could apply that sort of idea all over the place in places I haven't even thought of or Dave hasn't thought of. But if you think all these sites are getting bombarded because they have a right for us page and they're charging money for it. If you go to a less crowded channel, then you may be able to sh sort of shortcut the whole process. Jaren's on. What's up? Good to have you. All right. Um, okay. Quickly, I'll, I'll mention if you go to the FAQ page, there's a section at the bottom and it says finding answers when you have questions. I think this may be one of the number, and I haven't talked about this much because kind of, I was kind of on a soapbox when I wrote it. Um, and actually, I may read it in just a moment because I like to hear my own voice, but I think it's important. And if you can find answers to your own questions, it's really powerful. And then, now you may not be able to find every answer, but if you could like get as close to you can as you can to an answer before you ask a question, your questions will be better and your answers, the answers that you receive will be better as well. And like I said, I'll come back to it. So auto 24 seven says, what do I think about rank brain? That is not a great question. Sorry to pick on you. Um, but, and I see you've mentioned a little bit more, but it's a bad question because there's not much context. And what do I think about rank brain? I don't think much about it. I, I don't know really what you're getting at exactly. Now you did give me a little more information. I do appreciate that. Um, Google roll out rank brain update. So backlinks and other traditional SEO method now a days effective or not. They're still effective. And I, you know, I think rank brain is bringing in like more interesting, you know, uh, ranking factors, but frankly, we don't like, no one has much information about it at all, um, to my knowledge. So, uh, and it, Auto 24 seven, sorry to pick on you, but yeah, have a look at the FAQ section at the bottom and like asking good, concise questions that, you know, someone's able to answer is, is better than a random question. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. And I'll actually read that section because I think it's interesting. Jill says, do you find yourself using a lot of my PM skills in the teaching? My biggest problem right now is you feel like you're looking at the summit of Everest and all I need to do is get to camp one. Um, yes, but not explicitly. So what I could do is, you know, throw in like PM jargon all the time and make it sound like I, I'm a PM, which I am, but you know, you don't need to know all the details. However, what I do is present the information like just when you need it in the order that you need it so that you're able to um, not feel overwhelmed. And that is part of the course to not feel overwhelmed. You're only, I mean, you have like the full picture of what you're doing you know, in the description of this video. That's the course material, right? So each one of those has um, anywhere from like three to 15 videos in it, something like that. Some of them are pretty beefy with the number of videos per unit, but you know the full picture of what you're going through and you only have to focus one week at a time on one specific topic so that, you know, you just got to get to, you know, the first camp and then the next camp and then, you know, go along the way there. All right, next. <clears throat> Tech Dot says, can I outrank Amazon with any one product's keyword? Anything's possible. <laughs> Steven says, Steven is uh, always some uh, nice levity bringing, bringing that to the table. Steven says, can you still get soap boxes? I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay, Prafulya says, having said recently, Google algorithm has changed and backlinks would no more effective. What's your opinion? Please explain. Okay, I believe that, I don't, where did you, actually feel free to paste a link where you've heard that information, but 
backlinks are one of the three big factors for rankings. Um, there are like 200 factors for, for uh, the Google algorithm and where things rank, but there's like three main things, the content, backlinks, and rank rank. And it li literally, if you read some of the early um, sort of documentation from Google, they talk about like the number of references um, to a site. That's how, that's one of the main components. I know that was old, right? But that is still one of the main ranking factors. It's a really good way to understand how good something is. And they, they, um, <laughs> they, um, yeah, they still use backlinks. So I don't know. I mean, I mean, if you believe that, that's cool. That's fine. I'm not saying I'm right, but that's what my opinion is. I think backlinks still matter. Anthony says, with the niche sites that I've created, have I found that there's lifespans on them with traffic where some have peaked and some have run their course? Not specifically. I think if you continue to put you know, work into a site then it will continue to at least stabilize or you know grow so if you do more work you will probably get good results but i haven't seen a case where you know it grew and then everything was great and then it dropped i haven't seen that personally um you could be dealing with like trends of products or something like that but in general i haven't seen that to be the case And Anthony says, um, I'd gather that creating timeless content is probably the best. Yeah, I think that's probably the best. All right. And Jill says, can I do the pop sound again? Did, I, I think that's like a, did I do that? Is that what I did? All right. Push call says a keyword rank number six, all done on on page, what to do for top three and build links for a post to start ranking first with anchor text. I highly encourage you to check out the FAQ page, my man. So that is on there. So I, instead of trying to answer that specifically, I will point you, I'll just paste the link so you can go read that. And the question, what, what did I, where, how did I answer the question? How can I improve the ranking for a KGR post? Read there. All right. See you, Profulia. And um, hopefully that was helpful. Yeah, I, get, I make that popping noise all the time. Um, Michael says, should one develop a negative SEO defense plan, assuming their site is ranking? Is it better to be proactive? Um, or is energy better served elsewhere? I believe... It's probably a good practice to check like once a quarter or so and just have a look and make sure you don't see anything out of the ordinary. Now, you will see some links just accumulate over time and it's probably good to purge those occasionally. If you see, in fact, I was doing a consult earlier, a one-on-one -on -one consult um, and was speaking with a person and I was like, hey, did you know that you got like, 55% more links in the last month. Um, they had no clue. They saw like one or two links in the search console, but when I pulled up Ahrefs, I could see they had a spike of links. Not good. So definitely good to uh, check out there. Arthur says, is it or can it be beneficial to guest post on a website twice? Yes. Yeah, it could be just link to different posts on your site. Bananamus says, what am I doing generally now? Am I still building niche sites? Yeah, so I still have a few sites that I work on. I'm not, I don't actively build new ones so much um, personally, but I spend a lot of time working with students and such, and I'm working shorter days in general. All right, and Push Kyle says, it's not a KGR keyword. so. Basically, you can follow the same st steps though. So you can generally follow the same steps and you have only a, a few things that you can do. So you can add more content, improve it or add backlinks. There's not many other things you should do. 
I can't think of one. You could try and get more social shares and all that stuff. But uh, for my time, I'd rather spend it on the content or the back links. All right. Um, last couple questions here. Let's finish it up. And Justin says, where do you check your backlinks? So I primarily use Ahrefs just because it's the the best sort of index out there. Very uh, quick to update. So if new links are added, you usually see them quite fast. So that's, that's what I recommend to check backlinks. Of course, the search console gives you good information. A little bit delayed, may not be a complete list, but that's a good place to look um, just in general for a free option. But if you have a chance to look at Ahrefs and you have, you know, sign up for the free trial for seven days, um, it's an expensive tool. So I don't necessarily recommend you get it all the time, Justin. But if you can have a look or Justin, if you just let me know, I can pull a report for you. But basically, but basically, um, with the graphs and the dashboard that you can see on Ahrefs, it's like you can type in the site and see like the spike of links or, you know, hopefully the lack of spike of links. So, all right. I think I answered most of the questions. All right. Profulia. I don't know. I'm just in a mood today. So, uh, I think you should take a look at the FAQ section. So, all right. Any other questions out there? Um, and I think if you can, uh, oh, I forgot I was going to talk about asking questions. All right. Does, it, does anyone want to hear uh, the asking questions section or did people follow the link and read it? Just curious. If no one wants to hear it, that's all right. It is a soapbox situation. I know there's a little delay. And don't forget, I put a bunch of links to different success stories. So you can have a look at those, um, you know, once we finish up. Okay, I got one yes. That's all I need. So, Jill, see you later. Um, finding answers when you have questions. Okay, so here I'm just going to read it out because I, I put a little time. So when I was taking a computer science class on operating systems at Georgia Tech, there was this professor that had one of those rep reputations, like the kind of reputation a long-haired CS guy teaching OS design would have. So I have a computer engineering degree, so I took some CS classes. So I don't remember anything from that class, but Professor Greenlee, I remember his name even, he taught a super important lesson, all right? So on day one, he told us the order of operations to find answers to questions. And I remember this from like 20 years ago, basically. So number one, you try to find the answer to the question yourself by exhausting all of your resources. So check your textbook, check your notes, try to look up the answer on a news group. Nowadays, there's so many sources that you can use. You could go to Wikipedia, forums, user guides, customer support, and so on. You have a ton of resources where you know someone someone says, how can I do X? Like you have YouTube in front of you. You could like find an example on how to do basically anything. Like I, uh, a few months back, our stove died and I had to buy a new stove and I got it delivered, but I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll wire it myself. And I wasn't hundred percent sure how to wire it. It's 220 volts coming in. And um, I just Googled it, found a YouTube video that was like 90 seconds long. I watched it a couple times and then I knew exactly where to put the wires because there's four wires in that situation. So basically your first like source is yourself. You should try to find the answer yourself. Now, next you can ask your friends and peers and Greenlee told us to check with our classmates and friends and maybe a person that had taken the class a couple years ahead. So in that case, right, you can ask, um, you know, people you see in the chat here or other you know, people in your mastermind group, just check to see what's going on. All right. So try and figure it out yourself and then go like one level outside yourself, your friends and peers. And then next is you can ask the teaching assistants during office hours. So of course these TAs were experienced and they knew the answers, but not always. I mean, sometimes they had just taken the course and they just learned how to do it. And then they were the TA the next semester. Now, 
they were usually, you know, able to answer the questions, but sometimes they were just able to point us in the right direction. But they were, they had a higher level of expertise and that sort of thing. Next, he said, check with your deity of choice. And it was a joke, right? I mean, he was saying, go to your God and pray or whatever you believe. It doesn't matter, but try to find the answer at the, the highest level that you can. Sleep on it. Think about it. Go away from the question for a bit. And then finally, you can ask Greenlee. If and only if you trade the previous four steps, you can go to his office hours and ask him the question directly. And the point is not to ask. Um, the point is to like look at all your resources ahead of time um, before you go to Greenlee. All right. Not, I mean, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel if people didn't ask questions. So feel free to add me in here, right? But a lot of times, um, for example, if someone says, how can we create backlinks? You probably have a lot of resources already that you could check to understand how to do that, um, or maybe a video that I've already recorded or that many other people have recorded. So if you ask a, a question where like you could have found the answer on your own, you've wasted that question because you are, you, if you look to see how to create backlinks on your own, then you could come in with a tighter um, question that's even better, like Arthur, for example. So is it, can it be beneficial to guest post on a website twice? All right, you're going like one level deeper. It's way more powerful um, because you already have, like you've already thought about it yourself. You developed your own answer and then you got stuck. Um, further, Michael says, should you develop a plan on negative SEO, like a defense plan, right? That's like two steps ahead of what most people are thinking. That stuff, like in the long run, that pays off big. So why am I telling you the story of Professor Greenlee? Um, even though it sounded like he didn't want to answer our question. So it's kind of an amusing uh, story, which is why I remembered it. But it's a guide to find answers on your own. It's really common for successful people to like find answers on their own, look it up. And then when they really get stuck, then they go for help to someone else. And when actually I'll take a step back. Um, I know that when I have received questions like that from the audience or students or whatever, like, and I see that they're thinking on a higher plane than other people, then if there's like a position open or someone I can introduce them to, like I, I do it right. Like, introduce them to new opportunities because they're again they're thinking on a higher plane than everyone else and it's clear when you ask good questions so when you go through a lot trying to figure things out three things will happen you won't forget the answer you'll understand the whys and hows and the principles not just you know how do you do x and then i tell you three steps and then you don't know anything further than that you don't know why you're doing those three steps and then if you didn't figure out the answer of course and i've harped on this a bunch You'll ask way better questions when you do actually need the help. So there's some, a couple ways to answer like really good questions, um, to, to ask really good questions. That's another story for another day. It is at the end of the uh, FAQ. So, all right. Thanks for listening to that. And just curious, I wonder, uh, I see, well, I didn't lose many viewers on that. So I, I wasn't sure if people were going to just hop off and think I was a jerk. But Anthony, thank you. You say solid advice. <laughs> Doug is the new school Greenlee. Yeah, I uh, he he was an interesting guy, interesting guy. I'm not. I don't know if he still teaches there, but um, yeah, I had to look up his name because I couldn't remember it. But I, I found him on LinkedIn. But anyway, the other thing that I'll mention is um, there's and th this goes up uh, like in the same vein of asking questions. There's a lot of questions that people ask that basically you're looking for permission and reassurance. And especially in the live streams, it's hard for those to come through well. Um, so it may be, hey, I found a keyword that has, I don't know, 2000 searches per month. It looks really low competition and I think I wanna go after it. Should I do it? The answer is yes, 100% of the time, do it. If you think you found something interesting, try it. Worst case, it doesn't work and then you learn something. Maybe you learn what not to do. Maybe you partially find success and you're able to like pull it off in 
you know, in the long run as you adjust and tweak and learn more and more. But if you think you should try something, probably yes, try it. Like with, without, uh, as long as it's not like, uh, Hey, I think I'm going to jump into, I'm going to jump off this bridge into the water. I'm not sure how deep it is. Should I do it? The answer is no, don't do that. But if the, if the risk is low, if the risk is a reversible um, consequence, then yeah, go for it. If there is low consequence, right? For example, starting a niche site, using a keyword that you think is pretty good, right? Consequence is fairly low. You could probably adjust as long as you don't make any fatal mistakes. And by the way, in the course, Five Figure Niche Site, that is part of the situation where it's like, you know, you can make mistakes along the way. Maybe you pick a weird domain name or something, but that is not going to make you fail. Um, you may have to tweak some things in the future, but it's not a huge problem. In fact, Graham, uh, who was on the channel yesterday, check out his success story. Basically, he, got, he has kind of a weird domain name, but it's all right. It's fine. That is not going to limit him. His theme was a little off. That's also fine. Like small little things are not going to make you fail. So, all right. And uh, Stephen, what what else uh, what else do people stand on Amazon boxes? So I was like, what what should I replace soapbox with? It's an Amazon box. And what kind of soap? Uh, what kind of soap did they have in there? Was it like laundry soap stuff? Like because those were big soap boxes back in the day, right? Um, because it's not like a bar of soap. That'd be weird to stand on a bar of soap, a little box like that. Okay. Any other questions out there? Now that I've like beaten everyone to, into submission to not ask the questions. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> All right. Um, next, we have... Oh, someone is going through all the videos. You feel tempted towards Amazon from AdSense. Cool. That would be, you know, it'd be cool if you could adjust, adjust over. Okay. Hi, hi says that's like me with your weird domain combining two different niches that slightly overlap. See, and that could be okay. Cause like people are, people like interesting stuff, right? And if, if you like combine the two things and then you find those people, like that is, that can be powerful, right? Um, Cause like those are the exact audience that you want, assuming there's enough people. All right. Thanks a lot everyone for hopping on. And I've been doing like uh, more live streams this week just to, you know, get out there, get people looking at the course, promote some of the other videos that I've published. So do have a look at all that stuff. And I may be doing, um, you know, just more live streams where I just pop on for a minute say, hey, be sure you look at this in case you have not. So really appreciate everybody coming on. We'll catch you later. Thanks.